What if Naruto was OP but neglected part 4? Let's go! Naruto is now in his hut, where he just chilled until he heard a knocking on his door in the morning. There stood the Raikage himself, along with Killer B, the 8 tailed Shinshuriki, as well as Yugito, the 2nd tailed Shinshuriki. Naruto gulped and asked, Yes? Come with us, we will talk about your stay here, along with the other village elders and other influential people in the Hidden Cloud, the Raikage said. Whilst walking back into the Raikage's office building, Naruto asked the two Jinchuriki if they had ever been discriminated, and they stopped walking and stared at the floor. Yes, but that is the life we have to bear. We have to be selfless as Jinchuriki, to take that burden, B said. Really, but shouldn't the Jinchuriki be celebrated as heroes if they're being so selfless? That's not how it works, and that's not how it will ever be. B responded to Naruto's question. Okay, fair enough, Naruto said. Naruto continued walking, and so did the other two Jinshiroki. The small group arrived at the Reikage's office, and the meeting began. This meeting is concerning the stay of Naruto, born in the Leaf Village, and son to Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki. Killer B suggested that another Jinshiroki could be very useful for the Hidden Cloud. Yujito nodded. He made a good point. That is the push that could make them the strongest village of all the five shinobi villages. And especially decreasing the Leafs village power by a lot if they don't have any Jinshiriki at all. Because whilst the Leaf does have powerful shinobi such as Minato, the Hokage, or even some Jonin and Anbu, they can't make up the difference of three tailed beasts on their side. The Raikage agreed, but there would have to be some repercussions, to know that Naruto isn't a spy from the Hidden Leaf. Here, the Raikage would ask Naruto some questions, and Naruto would respond pretty correctly, but only the bare minimum that he was asked. He didn't give any information regarding his previous training, or that he's basically the Jinchuriki of all tailed beasts combined. Naruto would be under close supervision by Yujito, and Killer B, as well as Anbu and anyone, well, any shinobi nearby. Naruto was happy though, whilst he did get looks from the villagers and shinobi walking by, because he was the talk of the town. For the first time in his life, Naruto was able to walk on the streets and able to go into shops and restaurants, like a normal kid, like a normal person, a human, which brought him joy and made him grateful of what he had now and what he had achieved, in comparison to his miserable life in the forest, not even able to show his face anywhere in the village. Naruto asked the Raikage if he could do some ninja missions to earn money to get a bigger house as to not seem suspicious, since food and such was funded by the village himself to show hospitality towards their new asset, as Naruto is basically a weapon in form of a human. The Raikage agreed, and Naruto could participate in ninja missions with Killer B and Yujito and his sides. A very powerful team. They were easily able to complete B and even A rank missions, sometimes with a little assistance, even S rank. They were the attack team of the Hidden Cloud. Three powerful Jinchuriki, and if there were their mission for them to do, they would never fail. That team had a perfect record, and Naruto was not just sitting on the side. He was actually doing a lot of the work too, even though he just got introduced to the village and the shinobi team. However, in truth, Naruto didn't really need any money for a bigger house, except for something like food, which soon he would have to buy himself. The reason Naruto doesn't need a lot of money is because once again, by manipulating the elements such as rock and wood, yes, he can manipulate wood, he was able to make a hidden trapdoor inside his mini hut, and build a much bigger area underneath, much more comfortable and spacious. Naruto continued in his team for about a month and a bit, and was able to gain reputation that would place him along with the top Jonian, some of the strongest people in the hidden cloud, such as Killer B who had massive chakra reserves, and was respected for such. As well as of course carrying the eight-tailed beast, 
At this point, Naruto and the rest of his team were called to the Raikage's office. The Raikage explained that Naruto was officially still only a genin, which is why accepting missions like this is not very good as a symbol for their village. To let genin do hard missions, it's not a good look on the Raikage. Which is why the Raikage decided to send, to send Naruto to the tuning exams. But even that was kind of a problem, since under the name Naruto, he never even passed the academy exams. However, anyway, Naruto should still participate in the tuning exams. Naruto would go along with B as his Jonin sensei and two other Genin. These were just Anbus, two Anbus, who never officially passed any of the tuning exams or anything higher than that. Which is why if they participated as a normal Genin, no one would suspect a thing, as long as they of course hid their true power. This was only to let Naruto pass since they had no interest in themselves becoming and getting the rank of Chunin. Yujito in the meantime, who was the odd one out in the team, left alone, no role to do, could either go along to watch Naruto and well, the two other Anbu, participate in the tuning exams, or have some free time, and she decided to do a mix of that. She would have some free time until the final round of the tuning exams, which she knew that Naruto would pass through. The whole thing would be a breeze to Naruto. She only wanted to see and watch something interesting, where Naruto could actually show some power and strength. Yujito has been building up feelings towards Naruto ever since he rescued her from five Jonin class outlaws who hurt her while she was being careless and fighting alone. This was about two weeks ago. Naruto picked her up, asked if she was okay, and then eliminated all the outlaws in one quick scoop, and before Yujito even hit the ground, he picked her back up. I'm already back, Naruto said, with a smile on his face. By the way, before anyone says anything, Yujito is younger than in the original series here, okay? Just remember that. She is younger. Now she is still a little bit older than Naruto, but she's nowhere near the 29 years old that she was in the original series, okay? Just so you know. Nothing weird going on like that. Relax. Now let's continue. Back to the present. Naruto is now heading off with his team, Killer B and the two Anbu, who were going to play Genin, just for Naruto to be allowed to participate in the exams because, well, you need a full Genin team. They arrived at the Leaf Village with about three days to spare until the tuning exams truly began. Naruto didn't go outside before the exams began since he didn't want anyone to see him or recognize him, so we skipped to the beginning of the first exam. Naruto immediately saw through the genjutsu that was put one room after the entrance to confuse the, well, not so strong gen, and walked past it without saying a thing. The two Anbu followed him closely. I'll be calling them the two Anbus in the story, at least in this part, because I don't have names for them, so if you have good names in the comments, Write them down because I don't, and I don't know if it's important. So anyways, let's go. Naruto begins the first exam after it had been explained to them by the proctor. The two Anbu know that they don't have to write anything in this exam because the real test is if they're willing to stick around to the, to the 10th question, which is only revealed to them at the end of the exam to test their team spirit and willingness to fight on. Naruto can do whatever he wants at this point, since there's no way he's dropping out of the exam. Now for round 2. That follows by Anko jumping in through the window of the room, where the first exam was taken. She tells everyone to meet in front of the Forest of Death, where Naruto gets flashbacks to his childhood, the place he grew up in. Realistically, he is still a child, but more mature and strong. Now Anko explains the exam, and everyone is ready to begin and enthusiastic to begin. The exam begins with Naruto's team, which she is leading, taking a direct turn to the right. 
to let all the teams pass by them so that they can pick at least one of the teams from behind to get their scroll and immediately win without getting into any further trouble. The plan works and Naruto by himself gets the scroll whilst the two Anbu pin down the other two team members of the team being picked off. Naruto's team can now make their way to the tower to finish off the exam and hand in their scroll. And they arrive almost in an instant with a variation of the body flicker that the Anbu have basically mastered and Naruto can do at a pretty high level too. They are in fact the first team to complete the second round here and the fastest team to have ever completed the second exam of the tuning exams in just 10 minutes. The second team is the first-tailed beast, Jinshuriki, the one-tails, Shukaku, who at this point isn't hostile towards Naruto and actually goes up to him to talk. Gara's team members are very surprised at this since Gara has never been one to talk, but Naruto and Gara go into a separate room where they talk. Shukaku, being a loudmouth, tells Naruto about a certain eye a renegon that he should try to learn someday. At this point, by the way, Gara wasn't conscious, so he doesn't know anything of what's going on right now. And also, the only reason Gara is telling him this now is because, well, the memory was kind of sealed away inside Gara, and it didn't seem necessary at this point. But now, since Naruto is actually getting into some trouble here and there, he should get all the strength that he can. So. After these exams are done, Naruto is going to further investigate the Renegon and perhaps try to train it to get that one too. Gara, well, Shukaku, and Naruto now break off once more. Here are the preliminary rounds of the Chunin exams begin, which are held between the second and third exam, the third being the final one. At this point, Gara is fighting first against Lee, who they are pretty evenly matched, though Gara does win this one. However, he does win in a less brutal way than in normal story, because Shukaku is not out for blood as much as he usually is, especially now after talking to Naruto. Now, he's not, well, a calm Chinchuriki, well, tail beast, but, well, he is much calmer than usual and actually letting Gara make decisions without influencing him on every second word that he thinks. So Gara wins, but in a much more relaxed way. Then Naruto is going on against Mito. By the way, again, no one knows that it's Naruto. Similar to when he was hiding as Kurama, now he's hiding as someone else not even named. So yeah, no one knows it's actually Naruto. They fight, but Realistically, Mito has no chance against Naruto. Naruto doesn't have to use the body flicker or his clones or any of the tailed beast chakra. He can simply, in a one-on-one -on -one physical fight, destroy Mito. He's faster, stronger, and more intellectual. His battle smarts are rather high, which is why Mito, once more, has no chance. So here, Mito loses. Now, Marin and Misu, Naruto's old teammates, one Uchiha and one from No Shinobi clan, are also participating in these tuning exams and are actually doing pretty well. However, Naruto will not be fighting against them, at least not for now. Now that all the matchups have been decided, by the way, the two Anbu, they won their matches with ease but are going to throw the finals. They just wanted to have a little bit of fun and, well, make Naruto's way easier for the finals. So now there would be a one month training period where Naruto would actually have the chance to further investigate that Renegon that Shukaku was talking about and ask the other tail beasts. So with time on his hands, for two weeks straight, he practiced once more with his Sharingan at this point he was actually using his Mangekyo Sharingan. It's basically the internal, since it has all its features, but it's not officially an eternal. So yeah, he was using his Mangekyo Sharingan and trying new things that had never seemed possible, 
such as pulling and pushing matter, which isn't technically possible with a Sharingan. But he thought that since the Renegan is basically a better version of the Sharingan, and a different version, perhaps the Sharingan could lead Naruto into possessing the Renegan, which he was somewhat right in. However, Naruto had to get closer to all six aspects of the Renegon. For example, one being the pushing and pulling of objects, one being about life and death, and also peace in the inner mind. Which kind of cuts back to the Byakugan training that he did earlier. Well, not earlier, but a while ago. And with all of those things combined, on the 14th day of training, when almost finishing the training for the day, of course, not even close to giving up yet, Naruto's eyes, Naruto's Mangekyo, spinned and spun and spun and spun faster and faster and faster until the Tomoe looking black ink kind of objects in his eye turned and spun and spun and spun faster and faster until they elongated into small, thin lines. But there were much more than Tomoe. There were many of those lines, and the background, the color of the actual eye, turned from a reddish color to a more purplish or whitish, kind of similar to the Byakugan but more on the purple side. Naruto used the rest of the training period to practice and train with the Renegon to actually be able to use it effectively. So now the training period is over. But at this point, I am going to leave off the video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and join my Discord. See ya.